Hi friends. Sometimes during after school yoga, we make a story fort. So if you'd like, take a moment, ask your family if it's all right to find some chairs if you'd like, grab some pillows and some blankets and make your own story fort so you can be comfortable and listen to our yoga story. This is one of our favorites. It's called The Great Hiss. And it's told as told by Guru Mai Chidvila Sananda, illustrated by Susan Cornelis. Can you guess what animal it will be about if it's called The Great Hiss? I hope you can see the pictures all right. Once upon a time, there was a big old snake. He lived near a small village called Vajeshri. The snake's name was Longfang. He was an ill-tempered fellow with a very low boiling point. He tried to bite anyone who came near him because he had developed a hatred toward people, actually toward anything that moved. If a dry leaf fell, he would strike at it. Even if the wind rustled through the bushes, he would spit venom at it. And there is Longfang. Longfang went out of his way to torment the farmers and to scare the village children. He loved to bully the women who came to draw water from the well. Sneaking up on them, he would lunge forward and attack them. Water would splash everywhere as the women ran for safety, clutching their pots. Longfang had been doing this for years. In fact, he had established a reign of terror in the village. To appease Longfang, the villagers had to leave bowls of food and milk outside their doors every day. If they forgot or left too small a portion, he would lie in wait and take his revenge. Each day the people spent hours looking for all kinds of colorful succulent creatures for the menu. The treats had to be his favorites and woe to the unlucky person who brought him anything boring to eat. One day, a wandering monk, a swami named Madha Vananda, was passing through the village of Vajreshri on his way to the Devi temple. He was a man who was well known for his kindness toward all living creatures, and the villagers welcomed him with great reverence. They felt it was their duty to warn him about Longfang. So they told him about their troubles with the snake. Much to their relief, Swami Madhavananda offered to look into the matter. The next morning, he set off down the road. Suddenly, he heard a loud rustling in the bushes. There was Longfang, coiled and ready to strike, his muscles tensed, his head swaying slightly, his tongue flicking in and out between two glistening fangs. For a long time, he stared at Swami Madhavananda. Then a most unusual thing happened.
as Long Fang looked into the eyes of Swami Madhavananda, he saw so much gentleness, so much compassion. He just couldn't bring himself to bite this tender-hearted being. Swami Madhavananda calmly walked over to a nearby tree and sat down. The snake followed him and curled up at his feet. The Swami closed his eyes and began to hum a sweet melody. Will you hum with me? Humming makes our heart feel good. It was so soothing to Long Fang's soul. In this way, they spent a pleasant hour sitting quietly together. Do you think they were meditating? Finally, Swami Madhavananda got up to leave. As he put his shawl over his shoulder, he lovingly said, My friend, stop biting people. It's just not good. The snake's crusty old heart had become so tender, so gentle, in the Swami's company that he could feel the truth of what Madhavananda was saying. The words penetrated his heart and he agreed to change his ways and stop being mean to people. A year later, Swami Madhavananda was passing through Vajrashri once again on his way to the Devi temple. As he walked down the road, he expected to see his old friend Longfang, but the snake wasn't there. The Swami went looking for him. He went to the tree where they had sat together. He searched on the hillsides and in the fields. He peered into every hole in the ground, calling Longfang. Long Fang, where are you? This is your friend, Madhavananda, who has come back to see you. Please come and say hello. But there was no sign of Long Fang. Finally, he came across the snake lying in the rice paddies. He was battered and tattered and covered with wounds. He could hardly breathe. Swami Madhavananda swiftly went down on his knees and asked, what happened to you, my friend? Long Fang very slowly opened his eyes and looked up at the holy man. He could barely speak, so he whispered, Swamiji, I followed your teaching. I stopped biting. I became gentle as soon as the villagers discovered that I was not going to hurt them. They started to abuse me. The people threw stones at me and beat me with sticks. The children twisted my tail and dragged me around. They treated me so cruel. As you can see, I'm half dead being gentle and not biting anyone hasn't paid off and has only given others the freedom to take advantage of me. Swami Madhavananda listened to the snake with all his heart. Then he leaned over and gently patted Long Fang on the back and said, Brother, I told you not to bite. I didn't tell you not to hiss. 
he smiled encouragingly at Long Fang. Come on, show me your hiss. Long Fang slowly raised his head and made a feeble, Try it one more time, urged the Swami. Little by little, Long Fang drew his poor bruised body up and with tremendous effort, he let out a great, can you guess? Hiss. Ha ha, that's it, cried Madhavananda. In good time, my friend, your hiss will be heard throughout the entire valley. So Long Fang learned to hiss. Whenever he felt he was in danger, he would make a fierce hissing sound. It really worked. People stopped bothering him, and he never hurt anyone ever again. In the village of Vajeshri, harmony reigned once again. This story makes me think about some yoga sounds we sometimes sing, and maybe you'd like to join in with me. If you have a favorite part or part you didn't like about the story or something you're wondering about, maybe you'll talk with your family about it. And the, uh, the sounds are loka, L-O-K-A, samasta, Supi no bhavan tu. And you can tap your legs. You can clap your hands. You might snap your fingers. You could even cluck your tongue. And we'll try it together. If you want to learn, you could try saying the sounds after me, kind of like call and response. You can listen. You can join in as you're ready. Loka, Samasta, Sukino, Bhavantu, Loka, Samasta, Sukino, Bhavantu, Loka, Samasta, Sukino, Bhavantu, Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu. May all creatures and beings be happy, healthy, peaceful, and free. Thanks, friends, for coming to the Story Fort. See you soon. Namaste.